Yeah. It's the name above all names. Let's go. It's the name of authority. It's the name that, that we can speak and walk in and have confidence in when we call on the name of Jesus. This was after church and I go up to him and I said, dad, you need Jesus, you know, at five years old. And so, yeah. and then I just walk away. Yeah. And that, my dad says it like this. He goes, those words haunted me. We start having a conversation about his life and he shares with me that, you know, he's living with his girlfriend, but his girlfriend's sister just passed away over a drug overdose. Wow. And, um, He's like, I heard the Holy Spirit in that moment say, I want you to pay for the funeral. Hey, what's going on, Kingdom Team Live? I'm Terry Cuthbertson, and uh, today I've got the honor of interviewing uh, Dustin Williams. He's a pastor in Maricopa, Arizona. Um, he is an entrepreneur, and he and his wife uh, have uh, just recently written a book called Speak Jesus. And the idea behind the book is speaking Jesus over our lives in the world and, and the power of speaking Jesus in our life. Um, I'm excited to have him on. Dustin's also a hilarious guy. You should be following on TikTok if you're not. Um, but uh, with no further ado, I don't want to waste any more time. Let's have Dustin hop on with us. What's going on, my friend? Hey, so good to be here. And uh, man, I just love you so much. You're like one of my favorite people. <laughs> and uh, I mean that with all my heart. Well, shucks. Thanks, brother. I feel the same about you, man. Uh, I watch all your TikToks and I laugh. And then you're just one of my favorite people to talk with. And uh, I love your spirit. And uh, I love just your heart for the Lord, too. Um, so, I mean, you just launched a book. And uh, that's not an easy task. Tell us about this book. It's Speak Jesus. And it's yeah. available at speakhope.org. Yeah. So uh, we uh, we just wrote this book. It just uh, just launched. And um you know, it's it's a message that really has been brewing inside of me for years, and I felt like the time was now. And it's interesting because when you look at the world around us and some of the conversations that are happening, um, it's it's a timely word. And you know, when I was growing up, uh, my grandma, I had a praying grandma, and she she prayed me back to Jesus when I strayed. I mean, she was anointed. And one thing that she always drilled in our heads was the power in the name of Jesus. Yeah, come on. Uh, you know, and I, I always go back to those old time hymns, you know, there's power, there's power, wonder, wonder working power in the blood of the lamb and different songs that I, I grew up with. And I was taught that the name of Jesus is something that you speak, uh, it to and expect a response, a supernatural response. And so I wanted to write a book that really helps supercharge the body of Christ into walking in that full authority of speaking, not only the name of Jesus, but decreeing his name yeah, in different realms and spheres of influence. That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. So give us, um, so when we're talking about this book, give us some stories because it's, it's a book filled with it's, I haven't gotten my copy yet, by the way, it's in the mail. Uh, I, I actually, according to Amazon, it shows up tomorrow. So I haven't even had the chance to read this yet. So I'm kind of coming in this blind. I apologize about that, but you and I were talking about the, the idea behind this. Uh, and I just, I'm so excited about it. So tell us, um, maybe share some personal stories that, that, that really have helped you, uh, come to this understanding you have with this book. Yeah. Uh, first of all, I just want to say thank you because, uh, you know, when I was going through this process, I reached out to you and said, you've done this before. <laughs> you like, <laughs> help me out. And so your wisdom and just encouragement oh, has, is just so valuable. Wow, thank um, you. but you know, when you get into ministry, um, uh, I don't know about you, but I didn't know what I was doing. Uh, I had some schooling, I had some, some different, uh, you know, uh, mentoring and things like that. But I don't think anything fully prepares you for certain situations that you face. Yeah. And, uh, one thing that I share in the book and, and it's a story, uh, to me that just, uh, signifies, uh, how powerful Jesus is, is a story about one of my, uh, kids that I had in youth group several years ago. And, uh, he was invited to our youth ministry by a friend uh, that and so he just shows up one day and he gets radically saved the first night that he comes and uh, begins coming. He he gets involved right away and it was the transformation was just amazing. Uh, but when you hear about his story, 
you just kind of step back and you're like, man, only Jesus, right? And, you know, this was a young man that grew up uh, in a home where his mom had made the decision to, to become gay and uh, began living a gay lifestyle with one of her partners. Um, they lived in a small two-bedroom house. Uh, he had an older sister and um, his bedroom was the couch and his closet was a suitcase and a backpack. And, wow. you know, sitting down with, with him and hearing like, he didn't really live at home. He kind of floated around to friends' houses and different things like that. And, and um, you know, drugs and alcohol from a very young age, uh, pornography, all those different things. And yet when he stepped into our, our service, he encountered Jesus, was radically transformed, radically saved, and began actively pursuing ministry. And wow. in statistically, when you look at somebody like that, their odds aren't very good. Yeah. Uh, and yet Jesus transformed him in such a way to where uh, he became just on fire. I Come mean, on. preaching the gospel. I mean, heaven is, is, is fuller because of this young man yeah. today. And, you know, that's what one encounter with Jesus can do to somebody. Yeah. I love that. I love that. You know, as a kid, um, I, I used to have, uh, so I, I love this idea of speak Jesus. And, and as you talk about this, it just makes me think about, you know, even, I, I don't think people always understand the power in the name of Jesus. Uh, and I was thinking that because I was thinking, you know, as a kid, I used to have horrific nightmares, like every night, wake up. I mean, with just the worst kind of nightmares you could have. And I remember my mom used to really, you know, talk to me about this, like, you know, Terry, you have power and authority over these nightmares and, you know, would encourage me, like when you wake up and you feel that fear, the name of Jesus is going to be even more powerful than that. And, you know, I love that in this young man's life. I mean, the name of Jesus is more powerful than his current situation. It's more powerful than anyone's uh, thought process of him. Maybe their estimation due to his circumstances, they may say he doesn't have enough. But when we're speaking the name of Jesus, we're talking about life giving hope in a way that just you can't understand. That's beautiful. That's awesome. Yeah. 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 And so, you know, my wife, uh, I, I kind of I made her write a couple chapters because I have an amazing wife and man, she just uh, it, what she can communicate and what she brings uh to people is amazing. And so she actually wrote a couple chapters. One of those chapters, she deals with mental health because oh, wow. for years she struggled with panic attacks, anxiety attacks, crippling. Uh, when we were having, when she was pregnant with our kids, uh, of course, hormones are changing inside of, of her body. And she had some of the most aggressive panic attacks um, and just gripped to the point of she thought she was going to die several times. Whoa. And so she actually has gotten completely healed of that. Come on. And so she unpacks that in this book of how uh, taking authority, speaking the name of Jesus, speaking healing over, over those things in those areas of her life. Um, while it didn't happen overnight, it did happen. She got yeah. her breakthrough because there's power in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. I love that. That's beautiful. That is beautiful. Yeah. And, you know, some of these processes that we go through, I just love that. Like, as we're speaking the name of Jesus, what we don't understand is we may be having victories, just not seeing victories, but they're, you know, in, 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 like you're having one victory after another victory till they pile up and you finally get the complete victory over that. Wow. I love that. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, tell us some more. I mean, uh, what what can people expect from this? Like as they get into this, what, what are they going to find within uh, the message that we're presenting inside of this book? Yeah, you know, here's the thing. I, I've i gotten great feedback so far. And one, one thing that people say is uh, it's simple and easy to read. And I really think the gospel is simple. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, sometimes we try to complicate it as believers and Christians. And uh, the reality is, is, is Jesus died for us so that we could receive salvation through the cross, but so we could also walk in power. And, yeah. you know, we receive the Holy Spirit when we get saved. And oftentimes we don't understand, but we can activate the Holy Spirit at any point because we're walking 
testimonies here on earth. And so, you know, Romans 10, 13 says, for everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And yeah. so there's power, there's salvation power that happens in the name of Jesus, but there's also the power to, to walk in authority here on earth. So that means when you, when you encounter sickness, speaking the name of Jesus, something that um, we've tried to do with our kids and granted, you know, we're not always perfect in this, but something that we've, we've really tried to target is that when our kids get hurt or, you know, they're, some of them are little, my little girl, she's a dancer. She's in dancing right now. And like, she does cartwheels everywhere. I mean, she'll <laughs> do cartwheels in the middle of the store and you're like, yeah, Sadie, calm down, you know? Yeah. <laughs> uh, but now that she's conquered the cartwheel, now she's starting to get a little more aggressive, you know, and, and some of her tricks and she calls them aerials and stuff. <laughs> and, uh, you know, she'll get hurt and she'll come to us crying. And, and the first thing we say is, Let's pray because we want our kids to understand that while medicine is great, and I, I thank God every day for doctors, and while um, we have those things that are available to us, the 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 place we should always start as believers is going to the Father and yeah. speaking His name over it. Lord, heal this in Jesus' cool. name. Teaching our kids that, hey, you can go to Jesus. He's the first source we should go to. Yeah. And so... Um, that's you know, I, I'm hoping that I can communicate communicate that just not only to my kids but to the body as well. That yeah. that that it is easy to walk in this power. You don't have to be a Bible scholar. You don't have to have a ministry of thousands of people and 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 even write books like I did. You can walk in the authority of Jesus because He's given it to you. Yeah, and um, it's available to you today. It's amazing. Yeah, maybe talk to to anyone watching, like help them understand what that means when you're saying this authority in the name of Jesus, you know, because I know like Ephesians chapter one tells us that when Jesus, through the power of the Holy Spirit, was raised from the grave, uh, it says he was given five things. One of those things he was given is the name above every name, yeah. which means that at that name. And then we also know the Bible in the New Testament tells us at his name, everything that has uh, a name will bow at the name of Jesus. Yes. Right. And so maybe yes. talk to the maybe talk to people listening right now and let them know like what what does it mean what are we talking about this authority what are we what are we looking at when we when we're utilizing or speaking the name of Jesus over our situations or over our life Yeah uh, John 14:13 says whatever you ask for in my name will be given to you Yeah and in order to and he goes on to say because this glorifies the father mm -hmm. and so you know, Jesus gives an invitation to say, whatever you ask in my name, I want to give it to you. Now, uh, I think we can take that a little bit ridiculous at times as believers. You know, we could say, well, Lord, uh, how about a new this or a new that? <laughs> yeah, yeah. There, I don't think there's necessarily anything wrong with that, uh, you know, uh, but I think we have to really understand what the will of the Father is for our lives when yeah. we ask in his name. Yeah. Uh, his will for your life is that you walk in wholeness. There you go. His his will for your life is that you walk in righteousness and holiness. Yeah, that's good. And that, uh, that you're the example of Jesus to the world. You might be the only Jesus anybody ever sees. Yeah. And so what does that mean for you? We have a responsibility mm -hmm. to walk like Jesus. Does that mean we're going to be perfect? No, absolutely not. But what that does mean is that we have an opportunity to be Jesus to somebody else. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, just the other day, I heard this incredible story by a pastor named James Baker, and uh, I've had the privilege of knowing James uh, a little bit here and there. Uh, got to talk to him on online a few times, and uh, he's he's just a real down to earth guy. But he was sharing a story, a testimony of uh, a young man that knocked on his door that was a salesman, and uh, the guy was selling cable uh, and. Uh, Jim was trying to kind of get him out the door because <laughs> he didn't want to buy it. But yeah. the, the guy gave him such a good pitch. He was like, all right, I'll, I'll give him 10 minutes. You know, he can come give me his pitch. But as he came into the house, he's like, you know, I have an opportunity because he's in my house. I could share the gospel with him. Yeah, and, come on. and he noticed that he was wearing some uh, uh, bands around his, his wrists, um, like carpal tunnel. Mm -hmm. And so he said, you know, um, is are you dealing with any pain right now? Can I pray for you? And uh, the young man said, yeah, I've got this carpal tunnel. I've got some other issues. And 
So, so Jim prays for him and he starts experiencing the power of, of wow. God right there. Um, and, and Jim says this, he goes, I don't know if he got totally healed. And I love the way he said it. Cause he's like, you know, I'm not going to exaggerate anything. Yeah. I just know he experienced Jesus yeah, in that moment. On. Yeah. And so then he's like, we start having a conversation about his life. And he shares with me that, you know, he's living with his girlfriend, but his girlfriend's sister just passed away over a drug overdose. Wow. And, um, he's like, I heard the Holy spirit in that moment say, I want you to pay for the funeral because the young man was saying, you know, there's all these costs and different things like this. So he goes, he goes, um, how much is this going to be? So the young man tells him he goes and he gets his checkbook and he writes him a check for the, the whole, the full amount. Wow. And gives it to him. That's crazy. Wow. So the young man's blown away at this yeah. point. He's like, wow. So anyway, he, um, they exchange numbers and then he feels like I need to go to this funeral. So he actually reaches out to him. He says, I don't know if this would be appropriate, but I would love to come if, if I could just to support you. And he says, yes, we'd love to have you. So he ends up going to the funeral and he, he, he kind of describes it as, you know, walking into, uh, you know, like a, a, a grungy, um, you know, place of, cause, cause you had these people from different backgrounds and, yeah. and he was definitely overdressed and he didn't fit in. <laughs> and, uh, there are people on the verge of fighting because, you know, they were rough, rough around yeah, the edges. Yeah. And then this young man sees him and starts introducing him to everybody as his pastor. Oh, wow. And he's, Come on. he's like, I've only known this guy two days. Yeah. Yeah. And his kids are running up to me. They're calling me uncle Jim. And he's like, he's like, it, it was just a crazy wow. experience, but you could see how Jesus used that moment. Yeah, come on. To just pray for somebody. And it transformed this young man's life. He began to go to church. He, you know, yeah, he began to have a relationship with Jesus, his girlfriend, is and then everybody else at the funeral uh was being introduced as as this guy's pastor. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, wow. it's amazing what Jesus will do with just something simple. That started with just a prayer, yeah, and ended up being so much more. So, you know, I I tried to capture that in this yeah. book that that That's Jesus amazing. is not just this ordinary name, yeah. It's the name above all names. That's it's the name of authority. It's the name that that we can speak and walk in and have confidence in when we call on the name of Jesus. Yeah. Wow. That's so powerful. That is such a great word, Dustin. I love that. That's such a great word. You know, um, I was also wondering too, like you personally, what, what's your testimony, uh, with, with speaking Jesus over your life? Like, um, when did you get saved? Have you always been a Christian or, you know, is that part of this story that's that were part of this message you're putting in here is kind of even how Jesus transformed your life. Yeah. That's some of my story is in there. And, um, uh, yeah, I didn't grow up in a Christian home initially. Um, uh, my parents, um, my dad was an alcoholic. Uh, my mom was, uh, she knew the Lord, but she was away from the Lord. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, when they had me, uh, my mom was just kind of like, uh, you know, I grew up learning about Jesus. I think it's going to be a good idea if I send my son to church. So, <laughs> uh, there was a church right across the street from our house and mm -hmm. they chose it pur purely on location because, yeah. <laughs> they didn't go, uh, but they would send me when I was three years old to, to go to this little assembly of God church. And I began to learn about Jesus there. I began yeah. to, uh, you know, experience Jesus. And I think when I, you know, I, I asked Jesus into my heart right away, you know, yeah. I, but I think I was around five years old when it really kind of gripped me. Nice. Yeah. And I go home to my father and, you know, he was probably drinking a beer uh, you know, or his second or third of the day. Yeah. And this was after church. And I go up to him and I said, dad, you need Jesus. Oh, wow. Come on. You know, at five years old. And so, yeah. and then I just walk away. Yeah. And that my dad says it like this. He goes, those words haunted me <laughs> Whoa. for, for the next, however long until he began to go to church himself yeah. and give his life to Jesus. Wow. There was something about his son coming to him and saying, you need Jesus Yeah, that transformed his life. Yeah, so, you know, I was probably around 11 or 12 when he got saved. Uh, my mom came back to the Lord before that. Uh, and then we kind of 
you know, had a Christian family. Yeah. Uh, when I was about 17, though, I, I fell away from the Lord. I had, there was some stuff that happened at our church that wasn't good. And, and you know, if somebody's watching this and I uh, can I just say this church hurt is very real. Yeah. And I don't discount it at all. In fact, I almost lost everything because yeah. of church hurt. Wow. But Jesus didn't put that on you. Yeah. And right. so you don't have to be afraid to yeah. take it to Jesus. Because oh, so he'll bring good. healing. He'll bring transformation to it. Yeah. So I I walked away for a season of my life. And I remember, you know, after chasing girls, chasing cars, uh, becoming an alcoholic at the age of 17, 18 years old, uh, finding myself in this place of emptiness. And yeah. I just said, I, I went back to the Lord and I said, Lord, I, I my life doesn't even matter. There's nothing yeah. about my life that people are going to remember. There's nothing about my life that brings hope to anybody. So whatever I have left, I know that I had a relationship with you. I know you've called me, but whatever I have left, you can have. And that began, that, that led me on a whole different journey of really discovering the love of the father. Yeah. yeah because I had grown up with a lot of knowledge of Jesus and spoke the name of Jesus and prayed in Jesus name. Yeah. But to experience the love of Jesus Come and the, the mercy and the forgiveness and it just totally, you know, it was amazing. Yeah. And, uh, I basically quit my job. Uh, I went to work at the church for free <laughs> yeah. and I said, whatever you have left, uh, whatever, whatever's left you can have. And I, that's I so meant good. it. Yeah. That's so and good. So, yeah. That's amazing. So I think what you're trying to say too is um, there's there's power in the name of Jesus, but you need there also needs to be uh, a realization of of who Jesus is, yeah. and so I think I think in that place of realization um, that can open the door for uh, you know for the power of speaking that name of Jesus over your life to take effect. Because like with your father, he wasn't a Christian, but the fact that you spoke that at five years old over him that the power of that, you know, really did affect him, you know? Um, and I would encourage anyone watching right now, there's such power in the name of Jesus. And it's not something to take lightly. We need to take it seriously because in that name, I, I feel this way. I feel like every, every answer I need in this world is found in the name of Jesus, you know? And, uh, but not only that, it is, it's the power to transform your life. And so whatever you're going through right now, there is power in the name of Jesus. And I think that's really the, the central message of what you're saying here is like whatever, whatever circumstance, whatever darkness you're currently going through, there is power in the name of Jesus that will forever change your life. Yeah. Amen. Well, that's beautiful. What a beautiful message. So, well, I'm excited. I can't wait for the book to get in tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, well, and you know, I, I sent you a copy too. Uh, so you're going to have two. And so you can give one away. Uh, nice. Yeah. Uh, well, thanks so to much. whoever you want. So, yeah. <laughs> well, thanks so much. Well, guys, once again, let me tell you to, to get a copy of this book, go to uh, speakhope.org. And uh, right now, if you, if you get a hold of this book and if you go to this website, there's also, is it, is it still available? The seven day? Yeah. So okay. like right on the side, there's a tab there. Uh, it will pop up unless you've been to the site before, but yeah. you can uh, sign up for a free seven day devotional. It'll download directly to your device. And um, this devotional, oh, man, uh, my wife helped me write it, but it is powerful. And yeah. it's a seven day devotional. Um, it's full of scripture. It's got a prayer at the end. Uh, but man, it, I just, I love it so much. So Come on. Awesome. And I, I just want to give it away. I just want to give it away to whoever wants it. Well, amen. So yeah, don't miss out on that. Free training is free training, right? And so jump on today, go to uh, speakhope.org. And uh, Dustin, thanks for coming on and sharing your testimony and these stories. It's such an encouraging message that you're uh, giving right now. And and maybe leave a word with anyone watching right now. Just, just leave a word for anyone watching, maybe a, of hope and Whatever you feel, like just whatever the Holy Spirit's telling you to leave. Let's leave a word for anyone who's made it to the end of this video. <laughs> yeah. Bless if, them. <laughs> at, no, no matter where you're at in your walk with the Lord, maybe you don't even have 
a walk with the Lord, or you don't think that you have a walk with the Lord, you can cry out to Jesus wherever you're at. Exactly. Uh, Jesus will never leave you nor forsake you. Uh, you know, he's carved you in the very palms of his hands on the cross. Yeah. And so when you think of the love of Jesus and how much he loves you and how much he's pursuing you, you can, you can reach out to him in this very moment and receive, you can receive healing. You can receive, you can be restored in your mind. You can be restored emotionally. You can be supercharged spiritually, wherever you're at, you can call on the name of Jesus. And so I, if there's one thing I can leave with you, this is speak Jesus, speak it, speak his name boldly speak it uh speak it with confidence um and, and just know this that Jesus is crazy about you and he loves you hey man that's awesome well thank you so much for jumping on and again Dustin and Heather Williams the book is called speak Jesus and if you want to get a copy of it today go to speakhope.org and uh, hey if you've enjoyed this video do me a favor like share comment um, hey, if you hate it, like, tell me how much in the comments you hated it. Um, you know, I, I, what I've been doing is, uh, any hate messages, like, yeah, I just pray over you. So, uh, just go for it. Like <laughs> blitz me with whatever you want. I'm excited. And, uh, thank you so much for jumping on today. I really do appreciate it, bro. Hey, I appreciate it. And, uh, thank you for being such an amazing friend. And I love watching what God's doing through you, uh, through, uh, Arcadia, Oklahoma, yeah, come on. through everything that you touch. It is amazing. Well, you make it easy to be a great friend, man, because you're an amazing friend too. So appreciate you, bro. I love you, man. All right. Love you too, man. Bye.